if we take somebody, the composer we both like and admire, J.S. Bach, in particular, focusing on somebody like that and his music, what do you get from him and his work and playing and so on? What which I... affects sorry to interrupt, which affects y your work and has an in impact on your other work i think uh the, actually the word mantra comes to mind um a sort of tantric idea uh, almost a shamanistic idea um that there's is something i sense in bach for example in, in particular the 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 clean, uh, how can I put it, the simplicity that becomes complex. Like, as I say, the drone, which is one note but becomes very complex if you go into it. Um, and I think Bach offers almost like uh, the, blank, the blank paper onto which these notes are placed. And it's, I'm more aware with Bach of that than any other composer. Um, I'm aware of the, the white sheet. If I'm looking at the notes, I'm aware of the white sheet, and I'm, aw I'm aware of with what minimal resource he's created such a powerful emotion, um, with how little so much has arisen. Uh, and the magical, almost magical uh, outcome of that is, is uh, I mean, it's beyond words. I, I can't really sort of, fa I can't fathom it, and that's great, because I don't, I don't want to. Um, it's kind of mysterious, a beautiful mystery, <laughs> mm, mm. Uh, and it, it it is that. It's the blankness. It's the power of the blankness, which isn't actually. So doing an awful lot with apparently quite little. Absolutely. Mm. And one can't work out really how he does it somehow. That's right. And there's that magic, and that's the, I guess, the alchemist at work there. And maybe there's a, maybe there's a connection. With various people through the ages, including Leonardo da Vinci uh, and more modern John Cages, um, where this occurs. At least I feel that there's a resonance. Now I find with well, the first bit of work I saw of yours was Anna Magrado, and what I found interesting about that work was the fact that you also did the drum part. Mm. The soundtrack, the sound, I hate that word, not soundtrack, you also yes. did the music mm. for it, which interacted rhythmically with the animated still images. What struck me was, and this is something very strong in Bach, is the rhythm, rhythmic element, the idea of syncopation. How does that work in film, in your work? The idea of syncopation? Yes, because it's, isn't it quite an important part of your work in film, a um, moving image? It is, but it's not a rigid programmed sort of syncopation. It's not a studied syncopation. I think the syncopation that, that I found, especially as, as you mentioned in Anna Magrada, is one of um, an out of sync sync if you like. Um, in other words, um, non-synchronous synchronicity. <laughs> it's difficult to put it. Um, one where um, if you have a, a continuous rhythm, say in this, in this example you have two continuous frames of rhythm. One is the actual frames of film and the other are the frames of the beat in the music. Um, what fascinates me is that even if they're not um, strictly in synchronization, they will be perceived to be in synchronization, and that then arise syncopations, which are a kind of product between one medium and the other, um, even if, strictly speaking, the music isn't syncopated. Uh, and I think that's what occurred to me um, with Anima Grado, which is basically a film of um, tabletops on the beach. Uh, different colours, and it's t they're t taken in a frame at a time, um, and so each frame is run through the projector, and flash up. They flash up individually, but the fact that the soundtrack was a very definite percussive drum track um, added to 
they kind of strengthened each other, I guess. What relationship do you see, because what you've described is something very difficult to explain, I think, the relationship between visual accent and musical accent in that type of work? Because do we actually see something in terms of a rhythmic visual accent in a moving image context? Do we respond perceptively to that quicker than to sound, do you think? I think so. I think there's possibly a delay in the sound, whereas the vision is a much more immediate response. So did you play with that idea when you, when you have made this type of work? It wasn't that consciously planned. Um, and, you know, a lot of the time people are asked, why did you do this and why did you do that and how did that arise? And a lot of the time, I mean, I've always heard this, is, um, is, is are the resources available are what dictated the method of working. And the resources available to me, and this is what I choose, are very primitive. Um, and I enjoy this limitation. I've always enjoyed the limitations uh, of being of the constraint of having to work with a certain medium in a certain way um, because that channels you. It channels you. You don't have to think of all the sort of different possibilities and things, endless avenues which you might do in a virtual world with a computer. Um, my research at that time was very much analog tape. Um, uh, analog synthesizer and Super 8 Cinefilm, which really you, you can't get more um, basic, uh, and, and therefore you're you're sort of you're sort of dealing with what what is you're you're dealing with the resources. That, but through that, and again, this is a similar process to the projects I'm working on now. Through that, uh, you could call it a deprivation, but I don't see it that way. Um, I see it as an advantage through that, as it were, deprivation, you're, you're forced into doing things. And when you just say, well, I'll just go ahead and do it anyway, then you discover things. And for me, a lot of the time, I'm not consciously planning. I'm not the engine at the head of the train. I'm more like in the guard's van, um, <laughs> you know, seeing where the work goes. And it kind of takes me somewhere. And then in retrospect, a lot of philosophy comes out and a lot of thinking, and then that leads into other work. Um, so, the connection between the sound and the music, and the fact that, that, that they related in that the way they did, was is really a byproduct of the materials I was working with. And that that can seem that can sound as though you're saying, well, you're lazy. You know, you're not actually you're not actually thinking. You're not actually planning anything. But I very much believe in working with the gut, um, uh, and less of the cerebral matter. I, I believe um, we're we're very much head in this society and not enough um, um, not enough gut, not enough not, not enough um, emotion uh, and I tend to go with the latter 